Only the shot town is bears on the flight. Let me go tune it to keep on the mic. He gon' make sure we get our news and highlights. When you get on YouTube, you better hit the lights. This situation is getting absolutely ridiculous. Hey, what's going on, Bears fans? Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Keek on the Mic, the podcast all about the Chicago Bears. As always, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Bears fans, make sure you also do me a huge favor by also hitting the like button on today's episode of Keek on the Mic. All right, Bears fans, I am feeling a little bit discouraged, a little bit frustrated, a little bit confused. Um, as we go into this Week 10 matchup um, over the New England Patriots, the Chicago Bears um, are sitting at 4-4. Four and four. Um, Obviously, this is a huge must-win game, not only for Matt Eberflus, but the entirety of the Chicago Bears organization, especially considering that we are about to go through the gauntlet of the schedule. We play Green Bay as soon as next week at Soldier Field. And then the following week, we take on the Minnesota Vikings also at Soldier Field. But I'm feeling a little bit discouraged, and this is going to be sort of a rant today on today's episode of Keek on the Mic, and it's going to be you know referred or, or pointed towards um, General Manager Ryan Poles. We have talked so much about Matt Eberflutes and his wrongdoings or Shane Waldron and his wrongdoings and even sometimes um, the quarterbacks, like even Caleb Williams and his wrongdoings, right? But at the end of the day, the person that has built this football team is general manager Ryan Poles. And Poles has done so much good for the Chicago Bears organization, really getting us out of cap hell, I'm obviously, obviously getting DJ Moore. He has done so many good things to me, to put the Chicago Bears in a pretty decent situation. And I think still, I still think things are on the come up for the Chicago Bears due to the fact of all the good things that Ryan Poles has done for this organization. But I can't help but look at the one big misfire that just has been bothering me over the last couple of days. And that is his negligence over the offensive line. And, and what stirred these emotions for me, Bears fans, is looking at the injury report Injury report for this upcoming game um, against the New England Patriots. Um, obviously, let's take a look at it right here on today's episode of Keek on the Mic. The first thing you see is that Karan Amagaji with a calf injury, he is going to be out. Um, so obviously, he's what? A backup tackle and guard for the Chicago Bears offensive line, the struggling Chicago Bears offensive line. He played one game, got himself hurt. Now he's been out a couple of weeks. Um, not, I don't really want to talk about Jaquan Brisker. I'm just looking at the offensive lineman here. Now, Braxton Jones and Dalna Wright, those are our starting right and left tackle. They are both out this week against the New England Patriots with respective knee injuries. Um, we will get Ryan Bates back, um, and he's going to be activated to the 53-man roster, so he can obviously fill in at the guard position. Tevin Jenkins is good to go, so that's also good news for the Bears' offensive line. But I can't help but think of how negligent that Ryan Poles has been towards the Chicago Bears offensive line. He has built everything else, the defensive line, the Chicago Bears defense as a whole. I still think he's got the quarterback position right with Caleb Williams, right? He's he's built everything else but the offensive line. And to me, it doesn't make any sense in the world why it's been such a struggle for Ryan Poles to build a capable, durable, and good offensive line here in Chicago. We talk about his experiences as an offensive lineman. Same with same with the assistant GM, Ian Cunningham, as well. They both played at a pretty high level. So to me, it makes no sense why they aren't able to navigate good talent or evaluate good talent when it comes to offensive linemen. It's the most frustrating thing in the world. Everyone knows that if you want to be a good football team, it starts in the, the trenches. I feel like he's done a really good job on the deep inside of the football of building the defensive line. They are going to continue to get better. They're still very touchy against the run, but overall things are looking up for the Chicago Bears defense. But when we're looking at the Chicago Bears offense, he has been negligent towards the offensive line ever since he's taken over as a Chicago Bears GM. Everyone knows when you have a new shiny quarterback in Caleb Williams, the number one overall pick or any quarterback at that, you have to build the offensive line to be successful. This offensive line is soft. They always get injured. They're not durable, right? 
And even when we do have a healthy offensive line, they are just not good enough. And I think that's one of the big reasons why this offense can't take that step forward. Maybe, and you know, Shane Walter's not doing any favors for this offensive line, right? He's not doing good as OC. But maybe if he had a capable offensive line and we had some continuity within, in the, within this offensive line, Maybe the offense as a whole, maybe Caleb Williams as a whole would be a whole lot better. No, but every single week we are shuffling with new starters, obviously with Braxton Jones and Darnell right out. I believe the Chicago Bears are down to what third or fourth stringers on the offensive line for their tackle positions. The projected Bears offensive line against the Patriots this weekend is looking at left tackle Larry Borm, which he has experience left guard Tevin Jenkins, which great. No, he's he's been the starter at left guard all year long, but obviously he has deal, dealt with inconsistencies in terms of injury and his play on the football field. Coleman Shelton at center, obviously he's been up and down. He's not the best center in the NFL, and he's been you know up and down for the Chicago Bears this year. Right guard Ryan Bates is going to be good to have him back, but it is his first game back, so I'm intrigued in, in, to see how he does in his first game back off of IR. And of course, Matt Pryor will probably play the right tackle position. He has 659 career snaps at right tackle. He last played the right tackle position in 2023 with the San Francisco 49ers. So I don't know how that's going to go. This Bears offensive line has been shuffling every single week. So my message to Ryan Poles is this. And we once again, we've been talking about, you know, firing Matt Eberflus, firing, firing Shane Waldron. To me, I will give Ryan Poles one more offseason with the assets that we have. We have a first round pick, two second round picks, which one of those second round picks is going to be pretty high because it's with the Carolina Panthers. We're going to have some pretty good cap space as well to, to make sure we can actually provide some offensive of linemen for Caleb Williams, protect Caleb Williams at all costs. But if he once again goes into this offseason and neglects the offensive of line, to me, that's like neglecting Caleb Williams. That's neglecting your, your offense as a whole. So to me, it's okay to put the blame on Matt Eberflus. He's the head coach. It's okay to put some blame on Shane Waldron. He has not been good as the Chicago Bears offensive of coordinator this season. But there has to be some sort of blame towards Ryan Poles as well. Because to me, this makeshift offensive line has been a failed experiment. And to me, it makes no sense in the world. You guys wanted this new quarterback in Caleb Williams, but we are still seeing the same exact problems on the offensive line. It absolutely blows my mind. Once again, continuity leads to long-term success, and we haven't seen any continuity to, on this Bears offensive line for years and years and years. And once again, I, I, I'm a still a huge Ryan Poles believer. I feel like he has done more good than bad, but him not building the offensive line the right way before bringing in Caleb Williams was a huge misfire. You are seeing the effects of the continuity of the offensive line not being there. The consistency, the, the, the consistency of the offensive line not being there. It's hurting Caleb Williams in the long run. He has already been sacked, what, 29 times? He's on pace to get sacked 62 times, which, which would be an NFL record. That's not good for a young quarterback that is trying to learn, that is trying to develop. So as much blame we are putting on Matt Eberflus, as much blame we're putting on Shane Waldron, as much blame we're putting on some of these players as well, Ryan Poles has to be looked at as well because of his negligence towards the offensive line. This is ridiculous, Bears fans. I'm tired of it, right? And once again, you have all these assets to, to make things right. So this offseason, Ryan Poles, it, it would be a boring offseason for the Chicago Bears. And when I mean boring, I mean I would double down on offensive linemen, not only in free agency, but the NFL draft as well. Because we cannot continue this path of makeshift offensive lines because that's not where consistency comes from. Every single week, we have new starters in place for the Chicago Bears offensive line, and it's overall hurting Caleb Williams in the long run. And to me, that is my top prior priority, is quarterback Caleb Williams and the future of him. So Ryan Poles, you, you have to figure out 
uh, in a quick in a hurry. Right now, obviously, we can't do anything about this at this point. You have to, you know, lay in the hole um, that that you dug yourself by not really, you know, piecing the offensive line the right way. And now we have to go through the duration of the season, and hopefully, Caleb Williams can make it out alive. But this offseason, you better make some changes. But if you do not make those proper changes and invest heavily in the offensive line, you need to go too, along with Matt Eberflus and Shane Waldron. So once again, these emotions stirred up by me just looking at the injury report prior to the game against New England Patriots. And I was just like, man, this is just ridiculous at this point. I know we've talked about this before, but I'm like, this is just insane that he is struggling this bad building a consistent and good offensive line. It, it absolutely blows my mind. That has been the one negative about Ryan Poles being the Chicago Bears GM. So Bears fans, as always, I want to hear from you down below in the comment section. Do you guys think Ryan Poles will ever figure it out in terms of building a good offensive line here in Chicago? Let me know down below how you're feeling in the comment section. But as always, Bears fans, make sure you continue to hit that subscribe button and the notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Make sure you follow me on all my social media platforms. And make sure you share this episode of Kick on the Mic with every single Bears that you know. Better than that, be back for our all new Bears podcast right here on Kick on the Mic. Thanks, guys. And as always, bear down. You ain't about it, you ain't about it, you ain't kick on the mic. You ain't about it, you ain't about it, you ain't kick on the mic. You can go and subscribe because I'll be on it right. You ain't about it, you ain't about it, you ain't kick on the mic.